Welcome back to the Venom Workshop. So today we're gonna to show you how to do, uh, on the 1600 watt bike here, is I'm gonna show you how to do uh, an adjustment on your shocks. Um, so you can make it ride a little bit lower. Um, not super lower, but lower. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. <clears throat> so if we come to the side here, shock right there you'll notice that there's a little adjuster on the top here and when you adjust that it'll help compress the spring and bring it up a bit um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna um, get them and set up so you're gonna need a number 14 socket because you're gonna take this nut off right here and uh, you're also gonna need a uh, uh, number five Allen key just you want to take that rubber off the bottom of the seat here so you have to take out these uh, these bolts up here. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. Just go ahead and remove those bolts. And then we can just fold that back. We're going to be taking, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to be taking the, the shocks right off. This is an air filled shock. So if you look way up here, it is an air filled shock and it does have a lot of rebound. Um, never use a compressor and just put it on there. That's not the way a shock fills up. Use a shock pump or uh, even a, a hand bicycle pump. Um, don't ever, ever, ever. Uh, just put a compressor on there because it'll just blow the seals and the shock and you never want to do that. So we're gonna, there we go, sorry about that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the, the bolt and nut off on the top there. And we're also gonna take the one off here and then we're gonna take this shock right off um, and then we can adjust it down. Now, if you're, uh, if you're adjusting this down, it will give you probably maybe an inch down now if your child is um is uh still a little bit younger but he's pretty experienced on a, a dirt bike um you could always go with a smaller mono shock till he grows a little bit um you can always buy them on amazon i will measure this when i take it out so i know exactly the length and you could like i said you could always go on amazon buy a mono shock that's you know maybe an inch shorter but uh, I'm gonna show you how to adjust this one right here. So just give me a moment there and I will be right back. Alrighty, so we got that off. Now, what we're gonna do, uh, you'll also need to put your bike up on something. I've got mine up on my bike jack stand here, but it, it could be a milk crate. It really doesn't make a difference, just as long as the bike's up in the air. Um, and you're also gonna need, with your 14 mil socket, you're going to need a, a 13 mil wrench to go on the, the bolt side. And then we can. Ooh. They're going to be tight, by the way. Shock bolts are always pretty tight. Get the nut off of that. Here we are. So we got the nut and bolt off the top, or the bottom one. Now we're gonna go up to the top. And again, so the wrench goes on the, the right side and your socket goes on the left. And it's gonna be awkward with the camera, but you'll kind of see what I'm doing. There we go. And that one wasn't loose, I loosened it up before oh, I started the camera because it was a, it was really tight. Okay, now I got my another nut here. So now, the rear tire is off the ground by about an inch, so I'm just gonna pop that out. 
Now I can remove that rubber. We can remove our top bolt, and then our shock comes out. And you'll notice, and it looks like when I turn this down, um, it's not going to do much, but it doesn't take much, very minute amounts on this shock. Uh, we'll do quite a bit. This is a 10 inch shock. So if, like I said, if, if your, uh, your child is a little, still a little bit too short, you can always look, you know, look on Amazon and you can find a nine inch shock um, that will suit you just the same. Uh, you want to make sure it's as robust as this. This is a really good air shock, this one. So you want to make sure. Now, you can also stiffen up the rear end, too, by tightening this down. But we're going to actually be loosening it off. Look at that. That's a, such a nice shock. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in my vise, and I'll show you how to get started. Okay, so I'm back here. I've got my uh, shock and a vise here. Now, don't mind my mess. I'm rebuilding an engine on a on another bike and I've got tools everywhere. Um, okay, so everybody thinks that you need a spanner wrench to turn this. You do and you don't. So if it's this low, I can turn it with my hands. Sorry about that. See how easy that is? And as I do that, I'm shortening the shock. There you go. That's as far down as it goes. So that's max what you're gonna get out of it and uh, how low it's gonna go, but it will compress easier too um, because the spring is fully elongated. Now, you can also lower your air pressure right here. And that will also give you a lower, um, a lower setting too. But like I said, if they're really short type thing or they're really young, um, you could always go to a nine inch shock. This is a 10 inch shock but I have lowered it down um, and I'm gonna put it back on the bike. But this is always adjustable and always easy to do. So even if I wanted to put it up, I'm gonna put it back up because it comes factory a little bit higher than that. But I'm still doing it with just my bare hands. Now, if I was to throw a leather glove on, I could crank this thing all day long. You don't really need a spanner on this type of uh, shock. You can do it with your hands or you could do it with a set of channel locks if you find it a little bit hard on your hands. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time so I'm used to torquing stuff with my hands like that. But if you wanted to, you could always do it with, like, uh, like I said, a set of channel locks and move it up and down. So now all we have to do is go ahead and put this back in the bike. So we're gonna do that right now. And I just have to get my camera in position and I'll be right there. All right, so we're back now. We're back down to where the shock goes back in. Um, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your uh, piece of black rubber here, just feed it down toward the motor and just pull it back over that shock mount like that. And then it goes in like that. So then, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> when you put your shock in, you wanna make sure that this air nipple is on the top all facing outward and not down so we're gonna leave it like this so all i need to do now is get my bolt and go ahead and just kind of start it in the hole Oops. here we go and my bolt is on there I got it started there, but it's not on. So all I have to do is lift up my rear tire. And then there we go. And that's our rear shock back on. Now we go ahead and put our nuts back on.
engine off. I don't need it here. And we're just going to tighten that down. And then when we tighten that down, we're going to make sure we tighten it down nice and tight. There we go. Nice and tight. Okay. Then our other bolt is already started up here. So if it's started on the side right here, and you can't get to it real easy, I can see it. What I'm going to do though, right, I'm trying to make my feet, my big fat fingers in there. I'm just going to put my nut right on my socket and start it like that. That's it, guys. So that's our video. Oh, no, it isn't our video. We also want to put this rubber back up into place with our number five Allen bolt. And that just stops over spray from hitting the, the rear shock from your tire and uh, hitting the motor. So that'll protect your motor and your shock and uh that's it guys so that's our video now everything's back together um and uh, that's how you adjust your rear shock in a 1600 watt dirt bike